Right. I'm not going to give you guys a long talk, inshallah, ta'ala. It's something, something very short. Something I think is relevant to uh, uh, you at, at this age. Um, and something I feel you better address now. And nobody but yourself can really address it for you. Um, the ayah that I want to base this talk on basically is our two ayat. One comes from the beginning of Surah Al Imran. This is the third Surah of the Quran. And one of the longest. Uh, one's in the beginning of Al Imran and the other is at the end of Al Imran. But they both deal with the same concept. Uh, in the beginning, Allah Azza wa says, wa rasikuna fil ilmi, yaquluna amanna bihi, kullu min ilmi rabbina, wa ma yadakkaru illa ulu al albaq. This is in the beginning, I'll share the meaning with you in a bit, inshaAllah. At the end of this same surah, Allah Azza wa Jal says, inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard, wa khidaf al layli wal nahar, la ayatin bi ulu al albaq. So he mentions the same group, ulu al albaq, that's the term used in the beginning of the surah and also at the end. You know how in a class, if a good teacher is teaching a class, They'll start with a lesson, they'll get into lots of stuff, and by the end of class, right before they let you go, if, if they know what they're doing, you know what they're going to do? They're going to review everything they talked about in the beginning. They'll, 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 they won't leave you without doing sort of a recap of everything we talked about. Remember A, B, C, D, this is what we did today. Right? That's the idea. The same thing happens in the Quran a lot. So Allah will talk about a bunch of things in the surah, but by the end, he'll wrap it all up by bringing up exactly the very things he started with. Okay, this is what's happening in this surah also. Allah so mentions a, a group called Arasi Qulafidai. Those who are deeply rooted in now. Before I go on, I want to share one more thing with you guys. Uh, which is that when you're learning, when you're listening to a talk or a speech or a lecture or anything like that, uh, doors open, people walk by, uh, kids cry, people scratch their heads. All kinds of things happen that would never get your attention. You would never look at those things ever unless you're sitting in a lecture. Then all of a sudden, the door opening becomes the most interesting. Watch. Money heads. <laughs> oh my god, it opens all the way. And you know, I thought you're going to walk all the way across the room and all the heads go that way. And go that way, right? So, uh, when you're learning, when it comes to learning, it's very little to distract you. So much as a squirrel going up a tree. If you're sitting in college in your classroom and a squirrel goes up a tree out, out the window, 400 people <laughs> like that, right? Even if they're PhDs. So try to avoid the temptation, and inshallah, you'll become better learners that way. Uh, so what was I talking about before the door opened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, good. Yeah, ulul al -ba. The people that are deeply rooted in knowledge, Allah talks about intellectuals, basically. Who is an intellectual according to Allah? Now. In our times, who do you consider an intellectual? Somebody who's really smart, somebody who uses big words, a professor, a Rhodes Scholar, a PhD, a doctor, a scientist. These are, these are intellectuals, right? So Allah gives his own definition of what's an intellectual. He says, Amal Nabi kullu min indi rabbi. Those who are deeply rooted in knowledge, they, they say we come to believe in it, it being the Quran. That's the first sign of a true intellectual. And second, kullu min indi rabbi. Not all of it is especially from our master. In other words, whether we get it or not, it's from Allah. The parts we understand of the Qur'an are from Allah, and the parts we don't understand are from Allah. We give our intellect up. We understand the limits of our intellect. Right? So the true intellectual is the one, the truly smart, the truly scholarly is the one who knows the limits of their intellect. That's the first thing. And then Allah says, وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ يَذَّكَّرُ Which is actually a form of يَتَذَكَّرُ uh, This word in Arabic means to make an effort to remember. So Allah says, who's going to make an effort to remember at all except, and then he mentions this group called Ulul Alba. And to be very coarse and rough in this position, I'll say the people that possess, uh, uh, possess the essence, the people of pure essence. So who are these people of pure essence and how do you become one? Right? That's the question. Allah says, nobody makes an effort to remember truth and remember this lesson about who's an intellectual, who really is rooted in knowledge, except the people of pure essence. So. When you go to the end of the surah, you'll find a definition of who these ulul al-baq are. In the beginning it says, you want to be deeply grounded in knowledge? You want to have these characteristics? Become a person of pure essence. At the end, how do you become a person of pure essence? How do you become a person, if you want to use simple terminology, a, a, a clean mind, a pure mind? Okay? Because what we're learning here is you cannot become a person of deep thought until you become a person of a pure mind. That's the, that's the thing I want to talk to you about in the next 10 or so minutes. What does it mean to have a pure mind? And what does Allah define it as? The word lub, which is the root, the, the source word in the al-bab, 
is the word lobe. Uh, lobe in Arabic means, you know, aqlun salih. It means a, 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 a good mind, khalisun min ash that's the key word. It's free from vanities. A sound mind that is free from vanities. And this is, if you don't remember anything from this talk, this is what I'd like you to remember. A sound mind is one that is free from, what was that word again? Yeah. Vanity. Vanity. Useless thought. Useless knowledge. And you know, we're living in a society, and in times, it's not even just in, in the United States, it's all over the world, uh, where there's what you can call information overload. We're all Googled out. Okay, we have too much information. And information is being bombarded to us, <coughs> left, right, and center, wherever you go. You, uh, you know, you're being, uh, messages are being pumped at you in advertising, when you turn the radio on, when you're flipping channels, when you're going through websites, banner ads, this, that, the other, you know, sports statistics, characters and movies, how many seasons of what show, and what happened to that guy, and, you know, what they are, you know, from, from video games to movies to, ad, to news to everything else, this is tons and tons and tons of information is being bombarded at you, right? And you can't even so much as drink a bottle of Snapple. You take the cap off and what do you get? A useless fact on the back, right? You, this is constantly you're being exposed to information. And you get exposed to so much information that you can't tell the difference between useful and useless information anymore. You become desensitized. You have so much information that you can't tell what's useful and what's useless. Because, you, you know, it's all just a big mess in your head. But the other thing that happens is, when you really come across some really knowledgeable, ben beneficial information, something that's really going to help you in life, you don't appreciate it. You put it on the shelf along with all the other junk in your head. You don't really see what the point of it is. I'll give you an example of that. Do you know what's been said about Surah Yusuf in the Quran? How Allah introduces it? What is he, what is, how does Allah praise the story of Yusuf? You know? What does he call it? It's a famous thing. We're telling you what? We're narrating on to you, even if you know the rough translation. The best narrative. This is the best story. Allah calls the, the story of Yusuf Ali Salam yeah. the best story. Uh, yeah. Chit chat later. Yeah. Okay, fine. Don't close the door. I'll stop talking. Fine. <laughs> 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 Why did the bell go? Why does it feel bad? I don't even feel bad. Anyway. The worst is when you're giving a lecture and the guy in the front row has sent a phone call, which of course he has to have a 50 cent phone ring for some reason. <laughs> First he lets it go for half the song, and then, when everybody has head is going like this, then he picks it up and says, yeah, I can't talk right now, I'm in a lecture. Oh, what happened? Oh, really? And then they go for a whole conversation. So, you know, be considerate to your audience. Anyway, so be considerate to a speaker. It takes a lot to speak, and if they, you guys get distracted you can easily, imagine the speaker. Right? They see a distraction, like, where am I? What am I doing? Okay. So what was I saying again? Aha, uh -huh. useless in this whole information. Very good. Okay. So the story of Yusuf alayhi uh, salam, Allah says it's the best possible story. I was teaching it at Sunday school one time, and you know what happened? One of the kids goes, no it's not. I'm like, why? I'm not going to say, that's kufr, astaghfirullah. Check your aqidah. He's in third grade. He said, no, it's not. I said, why isn't it? He goes, Dragon Ball Z is so much better. <laughs> and he's telling me the whole history, how he went from sand to super sand, and his hair went from blonde to yellow to green to whatever, right? And he came back to life in the dragon, and you know. I'm like, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. That is pretty interesting. But Allah says what? That the story of Yusuf is the best story. But you know, it might be hard to convince a child of that. They might be more impressed with their video game, the, the story, the plot in their video game, or the, you know, the story they are watching in a cartoon show, right, or a movie they saw. They thought that was an awesome storyline. So many twists and turns. So how do you explain that to a child, or how do you convince them even? You don't have to, actually. You know, Allah, at the end of that, so remember how I said the lessons in the beginning and then the answer or reviews at the end? What happens at the end of the Allah says, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي تِسَسْ مِنْ in their, in their stories, there are lessons, profound lessons, but for who? Not for everyone. Li ulil al For the people of what? What is ulul al bab Your minds that are free from what? Vanity. This kid's head is filled with vanities. And until his mind becomes pure, he's not going to see that this is the best story. Right? The fact that he doesn't see it as the best story is a, is a proof that his mind hasn't been what? Hasn't been cleansed yet. It's dirty, it's full of garbage.